Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner of Operative Extra Diet Art by Science, and today we are going to discuss some tips for spinning lace weight yarns with a drop spindle. First, let's talk about the tool itself because, you know, that's the easy part. Here's my drop spindle. Um, why do you need a, sp a special spindle? Well, when you're spinning yarn, a lot of times it doesn't really matter too much how much the spindle itself weighs, especially when you're a beginner. However, when you are starting to spin lace weight yarns, this actually becomes very important. So if you have a drop spindle that weighs an ounce or more, what's going to happen is as you're spinning your yarn and adding it to the shaft here like this, it's going to keep adding weight to the spindle. So in order to, in order to make sure that the yarn that you're making doesn't draft apart because the spindle is starting to get heavy, you need to impart more twist which means if you keep adding more and more twist as the spindle gets heavy, because you're adding this, this yarn, um, what's going to happen is your yarn is going to get hard, it's going to get very tight and very kinky, and even if in the end you end up plying it, it's not going to remove enough twist to get that loft, that bounce, that light airiness that you are looking for. So you need to be a little bit con more conscious about which spindle you're using for your lace weight yarn. This one is about 0.4 ounces and the, the goal you're kind of going for is about half an ounce. So um, this one definitely fits that category. You just want to make sure that your spindle is closer to a half ounce than it is to an ounce. Because um, like I said that will factor into the end result for your yarn. Um, this one in, in particular I really like. It's a golden ring spindle and you can see the ring here that goes all the way around. What that does is it takes the weight towards the edge of the, of the drop spindle and that's going to do two things. It's going to keep the momentum of the spindle going for longer and the second thing it's going to do is it's going to keep it from wobbling. When, it, when the weight is out here at the end it's, it's more stable so that when you add twist like this it's, it's, going, to, it's going to wobble far, far less than it would otherwise. So um, if you don't have this type of spindle, it's totally fine. Most lace weight spindles are well balanced, so you won't have to really worry about this um, at all. Just make sure you get the weight right. I just like the spindle because um, the whorl is made of Russian peat bog oak, I think, and it's like 5,400 years old. It was radiocarbon dated. I even have like the radiocarbon dated slip and everything. So it, it fits me really well being an archaeologist. So um, this is also one of my favorite spindles. Okay, so we've talked about the tool. Let's talk about the fiber. Now a lot of what I'm going to say can apply to using a spinning wheel as well. But um, there are a couple things that I'll mention that are more spindle specific. Uh, but first, before we uh, really get started, I want to show you uh, what my finished result looks like first. So, this year was sort of the year to get over the hurdle of holding on to fiber and petting it and looking at it and not doing anything with it. So, I've had this particular Angora for a couple of years and I haven't done anything with it, so I decided, you know what, I've got this beautiful new drop spindle, I'm just going to spin this. And so I did. Um, I got a two ply 18 to 20 wraps per inch out of half an ounce of fiber for each. And I have got, I've got two here. Whoa, we lost focus there for a second. Sorry. Um, each one weighs about half an ounce, and each one has about 125 yards, uh, like plied yards. So I got quite a bit of fiber, or quite a bit of yarn out of the fiber. Um, so you can see how a little bit of fiber can go a really long way if you're making lace weight yarn. So, and this hasn't, the twist on this hasn't been set yet um, because I'm planning to dye it, but since I haven't finished spinning it all, I don't want to dye it before then. And I also need to figure out which project I want to use uh, this yarn for, but since I don't know what the final yardage is, I can guess, but I don't know exactly what the final yardage is. So. Um, I don't want to pick out the project and dye everything and then realize I don't have enough. So that would be tragic. 
So that's uh, the show and tell part. Now let's talk about the fibers. There's lots of different fibers out there, but these are the ones that I have used and I've enjoyed using. Uh, some of which I have used my drop spindle for and some of which I have used my spinning wheel for. But basically, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter which, which spinning tool you're using because uh, all of these are really great for lace weight spinning. Um, the one thing that you have to keep in mind with the drop spindle though is as you add more weight to the, to the cop here, it's going to add overall weight to the whole spindle. So this is probably um, gauging by how much I have left of this fiber. Probably about 0.3 ounces is already on here. So I'm like two thirds of the way done spinning the fiber. Uh, so I know that this spindle probably weighs about 0.7 ounces now. So the times when I was spinning these, these two little skeins, I started to feel like I was adding more and more twist there toward the end. So I knew that half ounce was going to be pretty much the max for the yarn gauge that I was going for. So I mean you can you can interpret that as maybe a, a goal or not. Um, you can you can do your own testing, that's fine too. But generally speaking, I feel like a half ounce extra onto the spindle is probably more than enough if you're going to make a two ply lace weight yarn that's around 18 wraps per inch. So um, if you're if you're using a spinning wheel, that's different. Um, I spun a mixture of Polworth and silk for my Cora shawl with my uh, spinning wheel, my my crown scheme worked out just fine. And in fact, first fiber I'm going to talk about is Polworth. So one of the things I love about this fiber is besides how soft and, and squishy it is, um, well, uh, really the fact that it's really really squishy. <laughs> So this fiber has some really incredible loft, naturally, it's, it's inherent in the fiber. So um, like the amount of bounce that you'll get, or the amount of poof that you'll get from this yarn once you've washed it is incredible. So if you're going to be spinning Polworth, make sure that you test before you, you spin for your project, especially if you've never used it before, because what's going to happen is you're going to spin a yarn that you think is sport weight, and after you've washed it and dried it, it poofs up to the point where it's more like a worsted weight yarn. That's happened to me. So make sure that you, you either keep this in mind or you do a little bit of testing before you start. Um, so that you know how much extra poofing up it's going to do before you spin it all and then realize I have to find a new project for it. <laughs> and hopefully it wasn't a Christmas present for anybody. <laughs> so that's the Polworth and then of course Merino. I really like using Merino. This is some uh, lovely multicolored fleece that I found at a farm in, well, the Chicago area, I guess. It's not in Chicago but near Chicago. Um, and I can't remember for the life of me what farm it was. But it's really lofty, it's very soft, and you can kind of tell here the, the amount of spring that it has. So this will make a really nice lace weight yarn as well. Now that is what I've used for, uh, from Sheep. Now we're going to move on to exotic fibers. And we have camel here. This is camel down. This is about an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half uh, staple length. So um, this fiber, this has just been carded. So it's like a little cloud like this. And basically, when you're getting ready to spin it, and what I've done in the past is I just kind of pull open the fibers like this. And then I'll just kind of grab these, and then the twist gets imparted into it. And it makes it really light fluffy yarn. Let's see here. Got a sample of it right here. It's a two ply. I think this is probably, I don't know, DK weight, maybe worsted weight yarn that I made with um, the camel. Uh, because of the loft, you might need to test this a little bit to make sure that when you've washed and dried it, it won't poof up more than you expect. Um, it's been the case that if I spin semi-worsted, which is this style, 
And that's um, basically you, you pull back on the fiber and you've got like a hand supporting it. So it's like a supported short draft method. It doesn't matter like which direction you're pulling the fiber. You have like the short forward draw or like the short backward draw. Anyway, it's semi-worsted and you'll get a pretty consistent yarn this way. It doesn't poof up a lot extra. But if you're doing a long draw, which is what I did for this, it got very poofy. So you might want to test this in case um, you're using a different spinning method. Then uh, this could actually factor into your equation a little bit. And then we have some beautiful silky satin angora here. I haven't used this yet. I'm still using the white stuff that I bought, but I'm planning to combine this with another fiber, maybe some cashmere. Um, I've got like a pound of it. It's just been sitting there being petted every once in a while. But uh, basically with this fiber, um, you can pick this open and, and you can spin it the way it is, but it doesn't have a really long staple length. It's about a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So you would want to uh, kind of fluff this open and spin it. It's, it doesn't have a lot of crimp, so uh, you don't have to worry about the fluffing problem or a potential fluffing problem like you would for this fiber. So um, this actually turns out to be a very beautiful yarn with a beautiful halo uh, because of the, the, the very fine nature of it. I think it's... I mean, usually Angora is about 15 microns, so um, yeah, you'll you'll get a really nice lace weight yarn after that. I think I got some fiber stuck to my mouth. <laughs> Everyone eats fiber in their diet, just not that kind. <laughs> and then the last one that I've used here is um, Yak Down, which is a staple length, very similar to cashmere. In fact, it's often called poor man's cashmere because um, it's a little bit coarser than cashmere, but um, because it's a little bit cheaper, it can be a good substitute for cashmere. And similar to the way that I talked about um, pulling open the camel, you can just pull open the, the yak down like this, just to open up the fiber. This is probably an inch or less stable length. Okay, and then once you get it open, you know, get some twist in there, this will form a really beautiful yarn in no time. I actually made a cowl out of this yarn, and it's very warm. <laughs> Here's a sample that I did. It doesn't poof up a lot, but it definitely will poof up a little bit, and it might also depend on the style of spinning you're doing. This was a long draw, and it it poofed up a little bit more than I thought it was, but when I did the semi-worsted style, it also poofed up about the same, so I think it's just going to be a little bit poofy. Um, but this is a really great fiber for spinning lace weight yarn because it's very soft. So with any soft, hot fiber, you don't want it to be really thick because your neck is going to get on fire, and no one wants fire neck, right? <laughs> Anyway, so these are the five fibers that I am most familiar with spinning lace weight yarns. And um, a little bit, uh, I gave you a little bit of information about my observations with using each type. And if you have any questions about that, you can always ask me in the comments below or you can send me an email. I'll reply to you there. And if there's any fiber that I haven't covered, uh, let me know. I can try something else out. I have cashmere. I have cashmere. I'm a little bit scared to use it, and I don't know why. I should just I should just do it. Um, you know what? I'm going to make a video about it in the future. That way, I will say, okay, I've done it. I've used I've used the cashmere. It's no longer scary. <laughs> oh man, this stuff is eighty dollars a pound. <sighs> that was a birthday present to myself. Anyway, so hopefully you found this tips video useful for uh, spinning lace weight yarn with a drop spindle. And if you have any other comments or questions, you can let me know. If you have suggestions for other videos, you can um, 
you know, just in the comments below, talk to me about it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter, where I also run deals, like coupon discount type things, um, on those sites for my Etsy site, where I have all kinds of bats and hand spun and uh, dyed top on there. Uh, so that will be in the description below. I also have a new blog that I've been recently posting to, so if you would like to know more information about the things I've been working on or tutorials or anything else that um, is going on with me, I'll let you know there. And yeah, so thanks for watching.